the students. And I'd like to ask Eric Schultz, a PhD student, to come and introduce our commencement speaker today. Uh, my name is Eric Schultz, and as uh, Dr. Johnson mentioned, uh, I'm the, this year's president, or past president, of the School of Medicine Graduate Student Association. So it's my honor and distinct pleasure to introduce a speaker, Dr. P.Z. Myers. Dr. Myers has been an associate professor of biology at the University of Minnesota Morris since 2000. He currently teaches several courses, including genetics and scientific writing. And he also maintains an undergraduate-driven laboratory where they use zebrafish as a model for development. However, one could argue that his position at Minnesota was simply a launching point for what Nature Magazine has ranked as the most popular scientific blog in the world. And this, for this reason, we have invited Dr. Myers here to speak today. His blog, Feringula, is the flagship site for scienceblogs.com, and it garners over an estimated 2 million hits globally per month. What once started out as an experiment in web-based teaching has become a full-blown cultural phenomenon within the scientific community and has led to numerous speaking engagements, as well as a regular column in C Magazine. More importantly, Dr. Myers has gained fame because his blog, Feringula, has become the nexus of science culture, politics, and education. Dr. Meyer's address today will encompass aspects of each, and hopefully the graduates, your proud families and friends, and that we'll all in attendance learn something from him as well. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dr. P.Z. Myers. Thank you very much for that nice introduction. Uh, I have to say, first of all, that I am extremely honored to be able to speak before such a distinguished group of students at such an excellent university. And, and this uh, feels like it's, it's really, you've, you've done me a great honor by inviting me here. Uh, the pressure's on, though. I heard that last year, standing right here at the lectern, the, the previous class had selected uh, a Nobel Prize winner to give the address. I'm sorry, I'm not quite of that stature, <laughs> forgive me for that, uh, but uh, look on the bright side, I heard you talk for almost an hour and I feel like I should reward you by being a little bit more brief, <laughs> so I won't talk for quite that long. Okay, so I promise considerable more brevity and unfortunately though I do have to explain a little bit more about who I am, uh, Eric told you all these wonderful things that Wow, okay, I, I, I guess I'm that good, right? Well, uh, I'm a biologist at a small liberal arts university in the Midwest. I do a little research on developmental biology, and I do a lot of teaching, and I mean a lot of teaching. Of course, even a lot of teaching at a small liberal arts university means we turn out about 30 or 40, gradu or 30 or 40 graduates a year, uh, so, I'd, I'd really be surprised if anybody here has taken a class from me, so I, I can't quite trade on my skill in teaching. Uh, I'm better known because I also run this rather popular web blog that, that Eric mentioned, and I write articles for magazines and newspapers, where I do a couple of things. As an extension of my, of my teaching, I try to communicate the excitement of science to a lay audience. And as a public intellectual, I take great pleasure in slaughtering sacred cows. Some would say I take a little bit too much delight in the long torment of the sacred, but that's just the way I am. Now, the responsibility of the public intellectual is what I want to say a few words about to you here. Uh, you're about to receive this diploma that gives you the potential to be one of us too, and I hope you will be. A public intellectual is the modern equivalent of the court jester. Mm. The wise fool who could say anything to the king because no one would ever take him seriously as a rival for the throne. If the concept is a little bit too medieval for you, uh, look at 21st century America, where the best news commentary on television is offered by a couple of comedians on a uh, small cable network. It's the same principle. People on the edge of the herd, whether it's the mass media or the general electorate, are unconstrained by group norms and are given 
greater freedom to speak out and express themselves. The weirdos, by their very nature, have more latitude, and we also institutionalize the principle in ideas like academic freedom. Uh, did I just call you guys weirdos? Yeah, uh, sorry I did. Uh, you're all receiving advanced degrees from USC, and that automatically makes you all a bunch of nerds. <laughs> but take pride in that. It's a good thing. Now, you may protest. that This is serious business, and I agree. This is very serious business. You've been working hard. You've been extracting the secrets of life, the universe, and everything. Uh, you may have accumulated a lot of debt. <laughs> you have a mission right now, and you're thinking about the lab, or the clinic, or both. That's what you're thinking of your future. Your plan may be a life of sober scholarship, solid contributions to your field, and professional dignity. And maybe, we hope, a little prosperity and security. And that diploma, diploma is the key to all of that. That's all true. The door is open for you to cloister yourselves within your disciplines and do all that you've been trained to do, and I hope you succeed. But there's something more. You're also the lucky few, the ones with talent and discipline, and the fortunate opportunity to pursue science and medicine. And you have acquired another kind of debt. You've been granted this privilege, and now you owe society some repayment. We need you to make the world a better place. To quote a comic book character, with great power comes great responsibility. All right.